The Man in the Park It was around 4pm one November day when Monique Jones took her dog for a walk. Jones and her dog lived in Shenston, Staffordshire, England, a semi-rural town with lots of fields nearby full of paths perfect for dog walks. As they walked, the sun was setting and a mist had rolled in. Jones's small dog became agitated for some reason and pulled Jones along the path. As they continued, Jones felt herself becoming more and more uncomfortable. She was feeling very alone and noticed that, despite the usual presence of lots of other people walking their dogs on the path, she couldn't see or hear anyone at that moment. She was becoming uneasy with the outing and was about to turn back. Then there was a man standing off the path facing her. This figure was very tall. He had no hair and no features on his face. He appeared to be dressed in a wetsuit as the rest of his body was just black. His arms dangled limply at his sides and seemed to be far too long for a person. For a time, Jones and this strange man just stood looking at each other. Then the man started to spin his arms raising up as he spun faster and faster, raising on their own accord. Jones ran, pulling her dog behind her. The animal was barking loudly and didn't want to follow her. She stopped for a moment to look back, and the man had vanished. There was nowhere in the field to hide quickly, and he would have been visible if he was trying to run somewhere. Instead, he was just gone. She ran to the field's gate and looked back again and there was still nothing anywhere in the field. She hurriedly returned to her home, which was only a minute away. No further strangeness was reported. The Demon Elves This happened in 1967. The weirdest part of this story is that my younger sister and I never knew that our older sister had seen the Demon Elves too, until all of us were grown with kids of our own. My younger sister Clarice and I loved to ride horses. Almost every day in the summer, we would set off to the stables. We left very early in the morning, so it was our habit to climb out of our bedroom window so that we would not wake the rest of the family. One morning, Clarice was partway out the window when she let out a god-awful scream and started moving in reverse, quickly. I was trying to push her forward, but she just came crashing back into me and we landed in a heap on the bedroom floor. Clarice was white, and I could tell she was really frightened, almost in shock. I kept asking her what was wrong, but it took her a while to be able to tell me. When she finally told me what she had seen, I didn't believe her. She said there were four little men outside in the bushes, and they looked like little demon elves. She said she could tell they were evil. I didn't believe in the supernatural at the time, so to tease her, and because I couldn't see any demon elves outside, I leapt out of the window and ran over to the bushes and started crouching down, calling for the evil elves to show themselves. They didn't, and I write the whole thing off as a very vivid imagination on my sister's part. Years later, we three sisters were together visiting and talking, and Clarice asked me if I remembered the demon elves. At that, our older sister, Christy, turned as white as a ghost and said, You saw them too? It turns out that on the very same morning Clarice had seen them, those evil elves had awakened Christy by scratching at her window, and they were laughing evilly and calling her name. She said when she got up to see who was at her window, she almost fainted, because it was the same evil elves that Clarice had seen. She screamed at them to go away, and after some time of tormenting her, they backed into the bushes where the unfortunate Clarice saw them. The scariest part was when Clarice said, Remember that you couldn't see them? And I nodded my head, and she continued, When you ran up to the bushes, they were still there. You were just inches away from them, and then they disappeared. We never saw those demon elves again, but to this day, we three sisters all agree that they really were there. The Irish Fairy Circle In the 1920s, in the wilds of County Donegal in Ireland, my great-grandfather was a police officer. 
One night on returning home through a lonely road, he began to hear some of the most beautiful music he had ever heard. He then saw a circle of figures in a nearby field dancing to the music, which he watched for a while before being overcome with an urge to escape from the area, which he believes the fairies induced on him. Despite being laughed at and being joked at, he swore that what he saw was real and genuine. In a separate incident in the same area, he was riding his horse along another lonely road when the horse, which had been calm for the whole day, suddenly bolted and became very scared and hesitated before making an enormous jump over something unseen in the darkness. It then threw him off and galloped away like the wind, leaving my grandfather to get home in the darkness on his own. He always claimed that the horse had sensed something, like a demon or an evil spirit, and had jumped over it. A Trickster in My House my house seems to hold a benevolent entity that seems more mischievous than threatening. The incidents I'm about to share happened over a period of time from 1999 to 2009. When I was younger, my parents got me a cell phone only to use in a state of emergency, but of course I used it to contact my friends. One day I found myself home alone and went to find my cell phone to chat it up with my bestie. I distinctly remember putting it on the counter, but it wasn't there. I searched the entire house in vain. I dumped out every content of my purse, threw all the cushions off the couch. I retraced all of my steps, but I simply couldn't find it. I raced to our home phone in a panic, thinking I would call my number and listen for the ringtone to echo through the house. This is when something strange happens. As I was listening to the ringing, and keeping a keen ear out for the ringtone of my phone lost somewhere in the house, a male voice answered. Startled, I asked who it was. Who are you? was his reply. I quickly hung up, not sure why exactly I did so. That's when I glanced over and saw my cell phone on the kitchen counter. It most certainly wasn't there a second ago. At a loss, I grabbed it up and scanned through my missed calls. And there it was my house number on the missed calls list, plain as day. I checked the sound, and it was definitely on, so I wonder why I didn't hear it ring. Then I noticed something else bizarre. Beside the house number on the missed call list, it stated that the call came from Oregon. I live in Pennsylvania. How on earth could that be possible? Confused and a bit frightened, I later told my parents what had happened, and even showed them the Oregon call as proof. My father just laughed it off, but my mother gave me a concerned look. She eventually pulled me aside and explained a strange story of her own. One morning while she was taking a shower, my brother and I were at school and my father was at work, and she heard a frantic knocking on the bedroom door. She turned off the water and heard my voice screaming, Julie, Julie, which is her name. Confused as to why I was suddenly home, and why on earth I would be calling her by her first name, she angrily opened up the door and looked out into an empty hallway. There was nobody there. Grabbing her bathrobe, she checked the entire house, but it was void of anyone else besides her. Unnerved, she went about her day and decided not to mention it to anyone until now. Invisible Intruder about a year ago, I was at my dad's house taking care of the dog for the week because he had gone camping with some friends and my sister. My wife was also gone to Colombia with her family for a month. My in-laws asked me to take care of their dog also while they were gone, and of course I said yes. So there I am, the first night at my dad's house, with these two dogs who had been playing together all day. I decided to go to bed at around 10 so I go lock the front and back door. I make sure every door in the house, except for my bedroom door, is closed, and I go to sleep. At about 12 o'clock, I hear the dogs freaking out. They were barking and whining, so I jumped out of bed and go check on them. On my way downstairs, I see the back door unlocked and open. I look down at the dogs, and they are both staring at the basement door, whining and growling, 
while laying in a puddle of their own pee. I see that the basement door is open, so I have 911 ready to be called on my phone and I go downstairs. I search around for a while, not even sure what I'm looking for, until I decide to go back upstairs and clean off the dogs. At maybe one, the dogs are finally clean and no longer focused on the basement, so I make sure the basement door is latched and I go back upstairs after making sure the back door is locked as well. At about two, I once again hear the dogs barking and freaking out, so I run downstairs and once again I see the back door wide open, so is the basement door, but this time both dogs are staring out the window looking into the backyard, so this time I do not bother going downstairs, I just close the basement door and I run to the back door and I close it and lock it as hard and fast as I can. I go back upstairs and I do not sleep for the rest of the night and both dogs slept on the bed with me. After about a week my dad gets home and I ask him if I can watch his home cameras from that first night I was there. I had to wait for him to get home because I have no clue how to work it and as we are watching I'm just looking to see if anything or anyone even went near the house during the night. Oddly enough, there was nothing. The only weird thing is that around 12 and 2, the back door randomly flings open, with nothing going in or out. But the scary part is that from a different camera in the house, we can clearly see me lock the back doors every single time. There's been no issues with the lock any other day before or since that night.